Pussy. Come here. Oh, there's a big girl. Hey, yo. show you what's going on with the pack here beautiful morning out here in texas hill country mid-december late december <laughs> actually um, uh -uh. gypsy's little pit bull puppy lucia is only a year old kind of corso female ozzy alpha male ozzy They're, uh, they're kind of on alert right now because there's been a couple vultures flying around the property. I'm out here <clears throat> on a couple acres, and the dogs keep pretty busy with, you know, all the wildlife that's around the property. Tons of deer, foxes, armadillos. <laughs> Recently, porcupine, <clears throat> I posted a video recently of two of my dogs, Dolce, the, the female, dominant female, she's inside right now, but she, come on, Oz, go see, <clears throat> this way, baby, she had a uh, encounter with a porcupine and got some quills in her muzzle, it tucks right here is the pit bull mix. He's my second male dog. Very laid back, but very high prey drive for as docile as he is with, with people and friendly with other dogs. He is a super high prey drive. And there's a vulture right there perched on that telephone pole. Or that electric pole, whatever it is. Was he? But yeah, he um he had it the worst <clears throat> as far as the, the porcupine quills in his muzzle. Yeah, he had it pretty bad. I had to take him to the vet. Very expensive vet bill. I had to put he, he and Dolce had to go under anesthesia. He actually has a quill still stuck on the bottom of his jaw that had been broken off and the vet warned me that some of them she may not have been able to get so I, I need to bring them back to get that one out okay Ozzy come on Oz <clears throat> well we got a lot of rain it's beautiful out here really mild for December it's probably, in, I want to say it's in the low 60s. Hi, Papa. <laughs> oh, yep. He's communicating. He's the alpha dog. He's communicating to her. You know, she's still a puppy. She's a year old, but she's still puffing. She's communicating that that's disrespectful what she's doing. She's kind of invading his space, getting in his face. But she does it out of uh, adoration, submission. It's actually kind of a puppy move, a submissive puppy move. But yeah, highly irritating to him. <laughs> so he'll let her know. <clears throat> Yeah, Lucia, um, for y'all who are just coming in to watch the channel, um, if you haven't been following for a while, Lucia is most likely I'm going to breed her. There's Dolce. <clears throat> yeah, most likely going to breed Lucia. <clears throat> she got a little bit of... Hey, baby girl. What happened? What happened? I'm going to breed her with a black male from a very... Come here, Dolce. There's Dolce. Dolce is the dominant female, adult female. 
Yeah, I'm gonna breed Lucia most likely with a with a uh, a black male from Force Pride out of Russia. Force Pride's a very reputable um, w uh, kennel with lots of champions in their bloodline. Their bloodline has huge kind of corsos, similar to Ozzy's structure. Ozzy's very a very large male, even for a a male, he's on the larger end of the spectrum and tall. <clears throat> and Lucia is very tall as well. Lucia, um, extremely big boned. You can see she's actually taller than Dolce over there. Dolce is full grown, nearly four years old. And Lucia is already taller than her and still growing. So, so yeah, if you're just tuning in, that's kind of that's the whole pack right there and <clears throat> that's kind of the plans some people were asking me um about a if if i have puppies or anything but yeah potentially i'll have a puppy um in about a year's time but um <laughs> i had a crazy thought the other day thinking um so 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 i would i would um you know, I was originally planning on and still thinking about it is what you do is you pay a stud fee to a breeder if you just want to use the stud services and they can ship the, the genetic material to you. I think probably, you know, frozen and preserved, but, and then you take the, the, the female to the vet and then she gets artificially inseminated um, that way. So that's that's an option the other option i recently and i say it's kind of a crazy idea but my reasoning was because if i did that i would have um first pick male and i would likely keep behind my you know first pick male from from the litter um that i would have from lucia and I'd really love to keep behind a black male because I th the black coat is just so gorgeous. But, you know, usually you d you're not supposed to pick based on color. You're supposed to pick based on um, temperament, of course, is number one, and then structure. But if I did happen to have a, a really nice uh, male and, and it happened to be the black coat, then that would be my first pick. So the going back to the crazy idea, I, I promise I'll get back, I'll uh, get to it. <laughs> the long way but um so with that in mind I thought well I could also just buy uh a nice a black male from the kennel and then wait till it became breeding age which is roughly about a year and a half years old a year to a year and a half I believe but so I, that's the other option is I could just buy a male from Force Pride and, you know, a male puppy definitely would want to keep a puppy <laughs> because I don't want to introduce an adult male to, to my alpha male dog here that would create a lot of tension in the pack. So, you know, buy a male puppy and then use that puppy to, you know, eventually to breed Lucia, to, you know, breed her, breed him to um, Lucia. <laughs> But yeah, crazy idea because I think it's a very one of my worst ideas yet, <laughs> and it didn't last long. But you know, because when I thought it through, it's, it's a horrible idea because you know I'd end up having two males, you know, one intact, and then Ozzy's very, very dominant, you know, so a breeding male is going to be dominant as well because he's going to want breeding rights to all the females. So he's going to compete with Ozzy. And I don't want to put that stress on Ozzy or, and create that tension in the pack. So so if I did breed and I did keep behind a male, you know, I still have that situation. But um, I don't know. We'll see. I may not keep behind a male just yet you know f from that f if I do have a litter because um 
for me to do that, I think I'd have to be closer to retirement age to where I could be home all the time to monitor their interactions if I had two two male kind of courses in the pack. So, come on, Oz. Let's go this way. Hi, Texie. Hi, Tex. Yeah, so likely I wouldn't keep behind a male from a litter that I would be ha you know, be having anytime soon here with Lucia. Just can't risk having two male kind of corsos in a pack that's not continuously supervised. Just really, really dangerous. Hi, Papa. Oh, baby girl. Hi, baby girl. Lucia, honey. Lucia. Well, you can tell it's winter because, hey, look at Tuxie's looking at me. You can tell it's winter because this is the hackberry tree or the sugarberry tree that the dogs love to pick the leaves off of and eat. It's real nutritious for them. It's uh, lost all its leaves. That's what she's looking for. But yeah, Lucia's going to make an excellent mother because... Hi, Tuxie. She's just, um, she's a very nurturing dog already. She's been like that with the puppy. She's very patient. I'm excited for her because, um, I think it's going to help mature her too. You know how she's always getting an Ozzy's muzzle, acting like a puppy. She is a puppy, but I think, you know, having a litter will help to you know help her to develop help her to mature um i guess psychologically <laughs> she'll have a lot of responsibilities with her with her litter lucia she's trying to eat the bark of, of the sugarberry tree but yeah so i got lucia from Wailani. Wailani. There's Dolce. Um, see what I mean about the black coat and the gorgeous? Wailani's out of California and drove all the way to California to get Lucia. And so I know Lucia's mother is absolutely stunning, y'all. Lucia's mother is a huge female, just like her. She got that size from her mother. <clears throat> and her... Uh -uh, get out of it, Gypsy. Oh, see, Gypsy's trying to get... The last remaining sugarberry tree leaves. Um, <laughs> yeah, Lucia's mother is huge, y'all. She's absolutely humongous. And tall and just an excellent temperament. And and her lines come out of Kostodinos, which is out of Serbia, I believe. And very famous kennel as well, just like Force Pride. Lots of champions. That line has really tall big boned dogs and uh, I th believe that's where I believe that's where Lucia gets her height from she's extremely tall which is what I prefer in a, in a corso I prefer a taller cor corso um, but so yeah I'm like very excited to see what she can produce and I'll let y'all know I think I might have misspoke on one of my um, prior videos someone let me know about, about it i really appreciate all y'all's feedback and comments because it keeps me straight <laughs> yeah so i think i may have misspoken and said that i already picked out a male stud but what i meant to say is i've got the kennel in mind that i want to get the stud from and the kennel is force pride out of russia y'all if you haven't taken a look at their page um or their yeah i think they got a facebook page um, if you haven't seen their the dogs from their kennel yet, just take a look and you will see they're all absolutely stunning. 
to me, they hide papa. They have a structure, most of their dogs, even the females, they're like huge boned, like Ozzy. Still within the breed standard, but just really bigger end of the spectrum and tall. And so, just every single one of them is absolutely a gorgeous, a masterpiece. And so, um, I'd be really excited to see what she can produce with uh, with a male from one of those, from that kennel. Hi, Papa. Well, y'all. So there's the pack, and that's what's going on. Um, yeah, we're just slowly waking up here. Kind of a rainy, drizzly, foggy morning. I guess similar to the UK. <laughs> y'all watching from the UK. We got a little bit of your weather, uh, which I actually like a lot. I used to live in Washington State, Pacific Northwest, and it's very similar like that most of the year, too. <laughs> kind of moody weather. I like it. I used to always have a fire going when I lived there. And it's just kind of a cozy weather, but I also love the heat. So I don't, I don't do well in cold temperatures. I prefer warmer temps so but uh anyways y'all hope y'all having a good day and we will see you all in the next one hi papa Thank you.